Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name is Tyler and today I have kind of a spicy video for you guys. We're going to be talking about if you need a degree to get into the tech industry. Quick answer is no, but I will put kind of a giant asterisk on that because there's, there's some things we need to talk about. But before we get into that, you might notice I am not in my normal recording spot. So if you can't tell by the bag behind me and my shirt, actually, I am in Disney. I'm at Disney World in Florida for a work trip. We just had a holiday party, so we got to come down here for a few days. That's been super fun. I also, I want to let you guys know, I did to my left and right. And I don't because I was a little bit concerned about causing noise because it's a little bit late at night here. And I didn't want to be that guy in the hotel room that was causing a ruckus at 11 o'clock. But now that that's out of the way, let's talk about it. So do you need a degree to get into tech? No. It is absolutely possible to land a job, land a really great job in tech without a degree. I recently landed a role as a cloud ops engineer at a small software company, but that is actually my third tech job I've landed since I graduated high school. I graduated class of 2022. So it's been, I think a little bit over a year and a half or around two years now, I think about a year and a half. And I've managed to land myself three different tech jobs in that time. So the short answer is no. You absolutely do not need a degree to get into the tech world. If people tell you you do, they are wrong. Sorry, just gonna say it bluntly, but they are wrong. However, I do want to talk about a few of the caveats that go along with that because it is not an easier path than college. It comes with kind of a completely different set of struggles. And I wanted to make a video to kind of talk about that. So if you're maybe switching careers or you're a graduating high school student and you want to get into the tech world, but you don't want to spend four years and possibly tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on a degree, what do you have to do to make that work? So the first thing I want to cover is Work ethic and grit are pretty huge to making the whole no degree thing work because all of your formal education is going to be based off of certifications and things that you learn and are able to present to people. So you really have to teach yourself to be able to study. If you guys don't know, if you're new here, I work three different jobs. so. I get up super early in the morning and crank out some studying then, but you really have to be able to teach yourself those study habits and really build those habits. If you need some tips, check out Atomic Habits by James Clear. It is amazing, highly recommend it. That book really inspired me to build my, my study habits. Quick intermission. If I'm looking down, that's because my camera is a little bit higher than my laptop screen, so wanted to kind of cover that. But anyway, back on topic, it is absolutely essential that you can teach yourself to study at the end of a long day, study at the beginning of a long day, that you're willing to pick up the book and learn the material. And even if it gets like boring or hard, you're kind of able to push through it to get these certifications that you need for whatever tech job you want. Maybe it's a cloud engineer, maybe you want to be a security engineer, um, even like help desk. Any, any tech job certifications will help you so, so much, but you have to be willing to put in the time to get those. And that's such a huge part of this whole thing. You can't graduate high school and just start applying for jobs with no technical knowledge and no I guess examples to show that you're really interested in learning. So that's kind of the first thing I wanted to cover is being willing to study, being willing to give that time to learn the concepts and to get the certifications that you need. As for myself, 
I am currently Network Plus CCNA, AWS Cloud Practitioner, AWS Solutions Architect, certified. There should have been an and in there, but that's okay. And I'm currently studying for my CKA, which is the Certified Kubernetes Administrator. I made a video about that a little while ago. Very scary certification, but we're getting through it. But to summarize, the first thing is learning to build study habits and having the work ethic and grit to keep those habits, to not really study for a month and then give up after three months to kind of make it part of your routine is super crucial. The second thing I want to bring up is being able to project yourself, really getting yourself out there. And this is vitally important because when you don't go to college, you won't know a group of people that are wanting to do the same thing as you. So it's super important to you be posted on LinkedIn, join a couple IT groups, maybe security, cloud, desktop support, anything that interests you, databases. Uh, there's so, so many facets of the tech world that you can meet people in and meeting those people and kind of showing the world what you're learning is really important. And don't get discouraged if you think what you're learning is silly. It's like, oh, well, today I just learned cable standards and that's not, that's not smart enough to share. That's not true at all, at all. Post about all the things you're learning and how excited you are to be learning them because half of making those posts is showing people that you understand the concept. The other half of those posts is showing people that you're excited, you're, you're ready to learn. You are cranking through this material, you are learning stuff, you're excited to be learning it. And that kind of excitement for learning is equally important to project as the actual content you're learning. So learning how to kind of step out of your comfort zone and share what you're doing, even if you just, just started, is super important. And if you're really extroverted, start a YouTube channel. I mean, LinkedIn posts are super fun. I, I post on LinkedIn maybe too much. I love LinkedIn. But one step above that is a YouTube channel. I mean, shoot, if you're studying for your CCNA, start a YouTube channel and post about OSPF, post about routing protocols. I mean, stuff like that is a really great way to market yourself to employers where it's like, wow, this guy, like, he's willing to kind of teach what he's learned and get in front of a camera and talk about it. This guy is willing to learn and study and he's excited. I mean, that's kind of a rare thing. And if you can learn to do that, I mean, it really sets you apart. So that is the second point is getting yourself out there, meet some people, talk to people, make that LinkedIn, start posting. Once again, do not think what you're learning is too low level to be on LinkedIn because it's not. Everybody, everybody starts somewhere. So don't, don't think you're not smart enough to be posting about what you're learning. That's ridiculous. That's like shooting yourself in the foot. So that's the second big thing that I think will really help you on your journey and that's really helped me on my journey. The third thing I want to cover is don't be afraid of rejection. You, you don't have a degree and maybe you don't have experience. I mean, you might be brand new apply to every single job you can. It doesn't matter if they want a degree. Apply anyway. I mean, LinkedIn has their easy apply button. Not LinkedIn. Indeed has their easy apply button where you can send in an application in all of 20 seconds. I mean, just go for it. I mean, minimum qualifications don't mean, don't, they don't always mean that you won't get the job you're applying for. You it's kind of like a more rigorous nice to have, but it is not your job to tell yourself no. It is not your job to say, I can't do this because I don't have a degree or I don't have experience in this. Apply anyway. I mean, shoot, the job I have now, 
they wanted a, I think, a bachelor's degree, and I didn't have that. And we'll kind of talk about some of the things that helped me land this job and kind of have helped me in the past land jobs, but that's the next segment. So, I mean, yeah, just apply, apply, apply. Do not get discouraged. You're going to get a lot of no's, and that's totally okay. Because the worst they can say is no. I mean, you apply to 100 jobs and you get 99 no's. So what? Just keep applying. I mean, they said no? Okay, on to the next one. That's kind of point number three, is just don't get discouraged because people are telling you no. It's fine. All they said is no. That doesn't mean you're dumb. That doesn't mean you're not cut out for tech. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means someone said no, and that's fine. So keep applying. Apply every day to these jobs you want, and don't get down on yourself if you get 500 no's because at some point the more you study and the more you learn somebody is going to say yes so that is tip or caveat number three is don't get discouraged when you get a lot of no's the fourth thing i wanted to talk about was you have to get creative because maybe after your 500 applications you get a yes awesome that is that's super exciting um, good for you, excited for you. If you just got that yes, let me know because I love when people comment stuff like that. One of the things that has helped me a ton in landing the jobs I have is getting creative with what I bring to interviews because obviously I do have my certifications, those are awesome. But in the last two jobs I've gotten, I've gotten kind of creative with how I've interviewed. So let's talk about my last job. I was an audiovisual technician and they were looking for someone that was willing to learn. They also wanted somebody that had a lot of audiovisual experience, or not a lot, but they wanted someone with audiovisual experience. My audiovisual experience I had on my resume was I had set up an Xbox. That is literally what I had on my resume for audiovisual experience. I am not kidding. I will see if I can find a draft somewhere. but. When I came in for this interview, one of the things I brought was a diagram. I actually did a little bit of research on how some of these conference rooms might be set up. And I made a little diagram of kind of like a mock conference room, how I thought it could be wired up. And I brought it to the interview and I said, check this out. I, I went ahead and did some research and I this diagram and I wanted to talk through it with you guys. We have a touch panel over here that can wire into the, the TV that can wire into the compute unit and that kind of stuff really, I mean it shows like a next level of interest. I mean it's weird when candidates show up with things like diagrams and projects. I mean it's memorable. Because they didn't just come in and say, oh, well, I, I graduated with a degree from this university and, and I, I worked this job. No. This guy showed up with a project. He, is, he doesn't even have the job. and He's invested in making a project to show us. So that was, that's how I got my audiovisual job. And this cloud job, actually, I did something very similar. I had been studying some Terraform. And it actually had like two or three thousand lines of Terraform I had made that made this like real big architecture. If you guys are curious, I am more than happy to send you a diagram of what it does. But I brought this diagram and I actually did a live demo in my first interview. And I like showed, showed the person I was interviewing with this, this project and kind of talked through all the little quirks and features of it and things that I really struggled with and things that I thought were super interesting and maybe why I did something. Like I think I talked through why I had load balancers and auto scaling groups and why I thought both were a great thing to implement. So be creative. I mean, go that extra mile and do some research. I mean, make it interesting for the person you're interviewing with because you want to make it memorable. I mean, if you are not the most qualified candidate, and a lot of the times you might not be because there's a lot of people with college degrees and 
that fancy little piece of paper, resume for resume, same experience and everything, the person with the piece of paper will win. However, when the person without the piece of paper brings in a project and is super excited to show, show off this project and really cares, that candidate will win nine times out of 10. So number, was that number four? Yeah, asterisk number four is get creative. I mean, it's helped me so much and I have no doubt that when you guys try it, it will absolutely help you. So those were the top four points I wanted to go over in this video that can really give you a boost in getting into tech without a degree because it absolutely is possible. I mean, I am proof the other ops engineer I work with is proof. There is so, so much proof out there that it is absolutely possible. Do not let people tell you that it is not possible because it is. But yeah, I wanted, I wanted to make a video to talk about it because it is one of my favorite topics to talk about. And I want to kind of get it out there that it is totally possible and you should not be discouraged by people telling you it's not because it is. Is it a little bit harder? Probably. I mean, you really have to be willing to put in some extra effort, but it is totally, totally doable. I also want to mention that this is one of my favorite topics to talk about because I like to believe I'm fairly financially savvy and I could make a whole slew of videos kind of going over some of the choices that you can make when you're younger and how they can impact your future financially. So let me know if you guys want to see kind of those videos. I also have a lot of like stories like my high school counselor said something super rude to me when I told her I didn't want to go to college. So that could be a whole video on its own. Not this video, but let me know if you guys want to hear about that. But I could honestly make a whole slew of videos about this topic. So if you guys want to hear more, let me know because I love talking about it. And if you guys love to hear about it, I am more than happy to make more videos. But that's pretty much all I had for you. So if you guys enjoyed and you want to follow me on my IT without a degree journey, Drop a subscribe and if you guys have questions or comments or if you are an example of someone that went without a degree and has, has an awesome job in IT, drop a comment because people need to see that it's possible. I mean, it's kind of nerve wracking getting into. It's when you have all the counselors and maybe your parents and all these people saying, you really need a degree if you want a good job. It can be really scary to go against the grain and not go that route. But if you have stories or if you're one of those uh, one of those people that has a great job without a degree, let me know in the comments because people need to hear it. Anyway, that about wraps us up. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your week.